Good morning. Today, I wanna to talk about the time I put on a free Fondo, 100% free, two day free Fondo. Let's talk about it. If it's free, it's for me. If it's free, it's for me. Hey, that's a free sign right there, bro. Go that way. I put this free ride on during the summer. It was the only week that I could do it. And I've always wanted to bring people up to my area for them to experience Bass Lake. And then a lot of people had to drive. So I thought I'll make it a two day thing so that people can justify that drive. Now I want to get into the business model of this because I, I find it really interesting. I, I like business stuff. Should I do the whiteboard? Let's whiteboard this. It will be interesting. Trust me. Promise, not one penis. Okay, business 101, do you have a product to sell? Does that product solve a problem? Is there a pain point? What I think is that for Fondos, a big pain point is money. Fondos are getting outrageously expensive. A lot of people don't wanna spend $250 to ride their bicycle with other people. Some do, and sometimes it's worth it. If we're gonna say, here's everyone who rides, this is the market, I would say half people want to even participate in a sanctioned event. Half of them want to pay to do that. And out of that, I would say half of those people are willing to spend outrageous amounts of money. Now, I would argue business-wise that this little sliver probably makes up for 80% of what is purchased in the whole industry. So you can't disregard this group of people, and I'm not talking smack on them, but like this is who would be willing to pay $250 or justify it to do an event. These people right here, they're willing to pay. Maybe they do some races. Maybe they wanna, you know, they don't really wanna have all the bells and whistles. But all of these people, they're badass. And I wanna hang out with them. But they don't wanna pay. So if you're gonna create a Fondo or an event and you're gonna charge a lot, I mean, you've just excluded so much of the industry to target this one little sliver. So. How do I solve this problem of money and access at least half of this amazing community? Well, make it free. I really have no idea. So like, we're just gonna be making a ton of beans and rice and potatoes uh, and teriyaki sauce and guacamole. That for me is, the f is just the perfect food for riding. Real food, dude, is awesome. Uh, this hits the carbs, the fats, the sugars, it's amazing. Uh, I also have a bunch of these, <laughs> it's kind of a long story about why this is bottle shitty and stupid, uh, but it actually is coming into a real handy dandy right now where I've got all these bottles that really didn't cost us much and we're just going to hand those up out on the road. Like obviously we have water stops, but how sick to just hand up bottles while you're riding. So pro. Okay, make it free, you say. What a dumb business model. You a philanthropist? You just gonna give away everything? Let me explain something. The second you take money for an event, regardless of where it's at, when it's at, all of a sudden you accrue tons of costs. You are now going to have to pay for permits. Once you do that, you're going to have to pay the city for police escort. You also need medical. So there's another chunk. Now the city's not gonna permit anything if you don't have insurance. We're racking up costs. We haven't even had a single person enter our event yet. You gotta pay someone just to take the money. Now you need some sort of incentive. Like why are people gonna come to this event? Maybe a really nice breakfast or now you need to provide a free dinner. Money, money, money. So now you gotta bring on like a catering service or you have to buy all that food. We have no one coming to our event yet. 
So we don't even know how much food we're going to have. So there's going to be so much wasted because you can't run out. So you have to buy more. How many rest stops do we have to have? How much stuff do we have to have there? Oh my goodness, our costs are getting insanity. Okay, so you, how do you get people to your event? You need to advertise, right? So now there's some level of cost to advertising it. Before we've even accepted a single dollar, the fact that we are going to accept a dollar, here's all of our costs. Permits, police, medical, insurance, payment processing, food, rest stops, advertising, risk. Dude, I've got such a crew of people helping. Uh, really, really feels good to get so much help. Um, we've got George from Pedal Ford. Uh, we've actually got some mechanic services that are gonna be following us. Like, that's awesome. Uh, got some vegan donuts and some coffee out. But, um, dude, I have no idea how many people are gonna show up. Maybe there's 20, maybe there's 200. Uh, it's hard to tell. Uh, maybe 75, right? 75 is my guess, 75. Which is totally manageable. Uh, we definitely have enough to, to wildly support 75. 150, it's like, okay, you might be sharing some bowls and fighting over some water. 300, and then that'd be like the fire Festival documentary. <laughs> What if there was a way to eliminate all of these costs? <laughs> well, there is. And let me tell you, we can eliminate all of these, well, almost all of these costs right off the bat by not charging. So now this gets into like a, different locations are a little bit different and there's some nuances here, but in my area, you can have up to 500 people on the road without permits, without road closures which means you don't need insurance, which means it's just a big ass group ride. Cause what's the difference between your group ride that of 20 or 30 and DeFondo? What really is the difference? So now we don't charge a single penny, no donations, no tricky. Oh, well, if you just, none of that, dude, I don't want a single dollar from you. That was the concept, the free ride, which I, I really like and I really like the logo I designed. I, I love the brand of the free ride, which I'll get into where I want to do next year with this. But by me not charging, all I have to do, my only expenses is food. It's water, it's rest stops, that's it. Because I don't provide the fancy dinner. I don't do tri-tip you know, dinners and that's a promotion. Dude, it's a free ride. Here's now my costs. Water, a little bit of food, that is it. That is it. For two days, I would say it came out close to $4,000 with all of the food that I bought for all the rest stops, all the water, the ice chests. Um, I had to like, I had to buy a tent. So I mean, I kind of from ground zero, right? $4,000 was my total costs. That's it. The more people I bring, as long as I stay under 500, the ceiling for gain does not equal what I put in. So I can just keep scaling up up to 500 people, but where does this revenue come in? How do we make money? How do I not just pay $4,000 for nothing? It's going well, man. Uh, we've got quite a few people. Uh, you know, <laughs> this is, uh, it's a difficult course. It's not, you know, I forget how much climbing there is. And so it's like, oh, the rest stop's just like up here. And then it's like, it's actually like, thousand feet up <laughs> uh we've got a great spread um i don't know man i think it's going well all right so i've been riding the front of the group up to the climb we get to the top and then i descend back down and i try to go all the way to the very back and then uh, help anyone up our volunteers our, our sag crew has just been unbelievably amazing uh the whole ride has just been more than I could have expected, like how well everything's going. Just good times, dude, and the vibes are so great because it's free. It's free, and so everyone's just stoked. One revenue stream, pretty simple, sponsors. Fondos are already doing that. They have expos and they have sponsors and it's presented by, like, but 
here's the thing, when you sponsor an event and those people are spending a thousand dollars on the weekend with travel and hotel and all this stuff, are they really looking at that brand as a viable option? And so then the sponsors, in my eyes, sometimes don't really get the best bang for the buck. But if the ride is free to you, if you paid nothing, now your pocketbook's a little more open. You see almost their bags and you're like, oh, that's a pretty sick bag. And well, I mean, I didn't spend anything to be here. So like, I kind of have some extra money. So now the sponsor thing is even better for the sponsors. The other revenue source is tourism boards. Bro, tourism boards are loaded. Why would a tourism board want to support this? Well, you're bringing people to an area that's going to put money back into that area. And since you didn't charge anyone and you're not providing dinner, hey, go find your own dinner. Go to Steve and Becky's rib shop. That helps a ton for the community. You can actually get in with those tourism boards and they can give you a pretty sizable budget. Now, you could do donations, right? That is an option, That's, that is a potential. And a lot of people offered to donate. I said no that defeats the purpose that to me feels like you're still paying and I don't want you to pay. I want you to be so happy because you didn't pay. So I didn't do that. But the other one, email list. Now the email list is actually extremely valuable. Nah, that's not really green. The email list, that's in blue because it's not actual cash. Like you have to turn that email list into something. That was kind of the point. Hey, let's let's create an email list. And I was fully open on when I promoted the ride. Why is it free? Because I want your email. I wanna be able to market to you. I wanna be able to sell you some stuff later on. So what you could clear from a free ride, okay, cost super low, but it is capped because the whole free ride concept and the ability to not permit, not get sheriffs, you can't have 5,000 people on the road. You're capped. The other thing is you would have to have multiples of these, right? You would have to do these all over the place. But that brings me into the other awesome thing. How about we have a traveling free ride? And it goes from town to town to town. So you don't have to travel. You don't have to get on a plane. You can go and have this awesome experience with all these other people because that's what cycling's about, is kind of coming together as a community. And then the fact that you didn't pay and then it came basically to your doorstep and it's gonna take you through some really cool areas. And I proved that concept 100% at the free ride here in Bass Lake. The people that were riding were so happy. There's water? Whoa, awesome, because I didn't pay for this. Wait, there's food? dope, right? Like it's just, everyone's expectations were so low that everyone was stoked. Then I had so many people come out that said like, this is my first group ride. I've never really done anything like this. I, I, I also never really uh, had a chance to get up here to Bass Lake, but it's beautiful. But I, I wouldn't have paid $250 to come and do this. But since it's free, ah. Hopefully I don't fart getting up. <laughs> I'm not worried about farting. I'm worried about something else. My biggest problem was fitness disparity. These type of riders, maybe they've ridden 10 miles, Maybe they're not even on like a proper road bike. Then I would say you have, you're kind of like your average Joe. And obviously it sort of exists on a spectrum here. This is most, most your riders. Then you get into like the, the elitist. They're flying by the rest stops. They're not, you know, they're going hard. Hey, like, is there a race component to this? Uh, I'm trying to smash people. I kind of made that too big there. And then I would say you have your pros, which clearly I exist over here. I mean, I'm just so beyond the chart. It's insanity. You boys national champion too. I mean, come on. I can't be, can't be seen with these people. That's a joke. How, what can you do to offer something for all of these riders? I was not able to offer any different routes because I needed a place that was safe to ride, that was low on traffic. And up here in my area, there isn't a way to do that. 
It's just like, hey, we're gonna go out and do 80 miles with 10,000 feet of climbing. And there's no bailout point. So what, and, and this is gonna come off douchey, I don't want it to be, I underestimated what my fitness is compared to someone in the green. But the problem for me was that because it was free, I got the whole range and actually much more in, in this area. These are the people that came. These people rock. They are the salt of the earth. They're the ones that make cycling fun. They're the, they're ride or die. But I had one guy come, flat pedals, busted bike, had a backpack with all of his clothes on and he's like in a shirt and jeans. And I'm like, dude, we got to climb like 6,000 feet in like 20 miles. You, you should not have this backpack on. Here's the magic carpet ride at the free ride. Vegan power. Vegan power! It's your greens. <laughs> But now, so for the event, I wanna ride with everyone, right? So we have our, our fast guys, okay? They're at the front. Then we have our mortals. And then we have the people that really, they wanted to take on something, didn't really understand maybe how much climbing there was or what was gonna be involved with this route because it's difficult here. So I wanna ride with everyone. So the way I did it is one, I spaced out the rest stops as often and as imperfect as I could. Okay, but these, these guys get there fast. And then they were just like, well, let's just keep going. They, like, they wanted to go hard. So then I encouraged and rode up to the top of the climb with these. And I kind of kept it, I, like we weren't racing. I mean, I stayed at the front and I could try to hold the pace. And then I encouraged them once they got to the top, hey, do you want more riding? We'll go all the way, go all the way to the back and just do it again. Because one, that's cool for these people. And then two, you want more riding, so then there you go. You don't have to just power through the whole route and then get done first and be like, on the burst. Do intervals if you're that good. So I would start with them. I'd get to the top of the climb. Then I would go all the way to the back. The whoever's at the very, very back. And now this is going to seem like an absolute douche or move, but I brought on these toe straps from Toei. I hooked them up to my seat post hooked it to their bars, and then I literally just pulled them up the climb to the top. Now I was extremely fit at this point, and I just literally, instead of pushing them, because that feels weird, right? That feels like, oh, dude, don't touch me, man. I... So this toe strap, I was able to stand, and they still could pedal just fine. They could stand, like it was so good, it worked out great. So I would tow them to the top, and then I would go all the way back, and I did that three, four, five times. I would go all the way, whoever's at the very back, I grab them, I tow them to the top of the climb, and then I would go back, and I go back, and I go back, and at one time I was towing someone and pushing someone at the same time. If you ever wanna feel like a absolute superhero, tow someone while pushing someone. <laughs> it was insanity. Now, because I was doing that, my focus on content, zero. I was not storying, I was not filming, I was so in the mode of I need these people to have a good time. And so I have very little footage of this. I have some photos from Drew, I've got a little bit of uh, a uh, video, but like for the most part, you just kinda have to take my word for it. Am I late to my own ride? One mile down from my house? Yes, yes I am. Uh, we got the top off, bike probably gonna fly out, all good. Okay, day two gravel ride now why did we do a two-day free ride uh, because people were driving a long ways and you got to justify more than just uh, you know one day and there's so much beauty to see up here so gravel ride <laughs> this toey strap has come in so clutch absolutely amazing So then on Sunday, you know, we had a, some new people, so, some not. The gravel route was like this. It was a flat spin around the lake, and then it just does this and that. <laughs> That's the gravel route. So I had this guy Tony with me. Without him 
Man, it would have been so rough. This guy helped me out so much, this guy. We would ride with the group to the first like rest stop. So then me and Tony would go all the way back down and then we'd help tow people back up to that rest stop. So then we were doing this like, I mean, that's literally what me and Tony did the whole way. It was just go up a little bit and then come all the way back and go up a little bit and come all the way back. And I did that to ensure people had a good time. I could super do shit. Oh, 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 yay. And there's a party, yay, I'm awesome, yay. All while Fred and Fredina are just like stranded right here, just dead. They're not having a good time. Everyone's partying over here. Fondo's great, dude. What about Fred and Fredina? I care about Fred and Fredina. And they didn't pay me. So me and Tony just did this loop. And we, we help people achieve a ride that they otherwise wouldn't have done. Broken shifter cable. Big ring. Toe strap. Broken ribs. Broken ribs. Smiles are not broken. I would say 70% of the people that came out to my free ride had pushed their limits extremely far. And a lot of that had to do with one, it was free, so sick vibe, right? Two, our rest stops ripped and then our support was awesome. All right, this is the last rest stop of the whole thing. I haven't really been able to film anything because I've just been focusing on this, but Jorge from Pedal Ford, he has been a lifesaver, like MVP. I, I could not do this without him. Uh, and this was like a last minute edition. So, dude, he is a legend. I mean, he uh, had some EMT work like immediately on the, you know, right away yesterday. Uh, he has been flying today, like trying to get rest stops set up all over the place. He's been all over the mountain. Paddle forward, man. They saved, saved my ass. The camaraderie was awesome because no one's really trying to race because you didn't pay, so you're just chilling. It was awesome. That was probably the longest video ever. Uh, check out on Instagram, The Free Ride. I am going to tour this across the country next year. I wanna do five of them. I wanna do one in Texas, I wanna do one in Florida, I wanna do one uh, Midwest, you know, Wisconsin area. I'd like to do one on the East Coast, maybe Pennsylvania area. But for the most part, I'm not motivated by money, I'm motivated by experiences. And it doesn't matter if I have a million dollars in the bank, I don't care about that. What I want is I want good memories with good people. Dude, this community's awesome, man, and you don't have to freaking destroy it by trying to make tons of money and hyping it out to be something it doesn't have to be. It's insane that the way December is for me with everything being so difficult and maxed out that waking up at five in the morning, which is, I did, I woke up at five in the morning this morning and I worked until 4 p.m. that to me, that I feel like I'm having a day off. That's insanity. That level is insanity. So everything for today, 418 grams of carbs, 142 grams of protein, 132 grams of fat, 
3,400 calories. But this thing is so delicious. Okay, so in this guy right here, what do we have? Um, this whole thing, I had a protein shake to bump my protein up. Uh, but this bowl right here has 21 grams of protein. The whole dinner itself ended up being 94 grams of protein with the protein shake. The biscuits, the carrots, the onions, the nutritional yeast, all that sort of stuff. I've had a really nice night with the family. I didn't film a whole lot of it, and I'm gonna go upstairs and wrestle with my daughter. Me and my daughter have this wrestling thing. She loves it. And I have a lot of games that I play with her, so like they're, they're called certain things. We have like airplane, we have the climbing tree, we have the jumping game, we have the springboard, like there's all these names, right? And so then we, it's not really like fight wrestling, it's, it's more like we just play on the bed. Now, I've been coming home super late, and so I have missed our wrestling sessions three nights in a row. And that, uh, I think I said yesterday, it like breaks my heart, dude. The free ride, I just wanna say that the people that came out and supported it are so amazing. It was so, it was such a vibe. And I can't wait in 2023 for you to come to a free ride and see what it's about and eat some of the best food at the rest stops you've ever had, free. Ride one of the best roads you've ever ridden for free. Yum, dude. We're gonna eat in bed, watch a movie. We'll sign off up there though. There, just like that, okay? Let's do that one. She got in my practice? Yep. Thanks for watching. Always be excited. Do it! Why won't you give me a call?